Maoist rebels in the Indian state of Chhattisgarh are demanding the release of prisoners in exchange for freeing a high-level government official they took hostage last month. Earlier, the rebels abducted two Italian tourists and released them after the government freed prisoners, including some Maoists. The hostage crisis has rekindled the debate on the Maoist movement and the government's response. FSRN's Bismillah Galani reports. <laughs> At Belipeta village in the eastern state of Odisha, hundreds of villagers and journalists greet Jina Hikaka after Maoist rebels set him free, ending a month-long hostage drama. Hikaka is a member of the state legislative assembly. The Maoist released him after the government agreed to free 25 prisoners, including some militants, and withdraw prosecution against 13 others. So far we have not got any information from Manish Kunjam, uh, but uh, only the media people have been uh, you know, uh, uh, posting updates that uh, the medicines have been reached, but officially uh, we have not got any information. Miles away in the neighboring state of Chhattisgarh, Asha Menon, wife of district collector Alex Paul Menon, implores the Maoists to release her husband. Uh, please, uh, you know, get to at least know what kind of situation he is in because no communication has been made from my husband and, uh, yeah, and I'm just uh, uh, facing all those um, uh, symptoms now, so uh, it's been very difficult. We're just struggling through it. The Maoists abducted Menon last month after killing two policemen guarding him. They are now demanding the release of eight Maoist leaders and an immediate halt to the ongoing Operation Green Hunt. Operation Green Hunt is a military offensive the government launched in 2009 in five states to flush out the Maoist militants. But human rights groups say it has resulted in grave human rights abuses. Maoist militants operate in two-thirds of more than 600 Indian districts. In recent years, they have significantly accelerated their activities launching deadly attacks against government security forces. Swapan Das Gupta is a senior journalist who writes frequently on defense and internal security issues. If you take the figures from 2005 to about the middle of 2010, which I have with me, it suggests that there was about 1,082 1, people who died in the violence in Kashmir. Whereas in Maoist-related violence, something like 3,041 people died. So you get a sense that what we are dealing here is truly what the Prime Minister said, the most serious internal threat in this country. The Maoists claim to be fighting for the rights of tribal people and rural poor. They have a strong support base across the tribal belt in western, eastern and central India. These regions are also the country's most mineral and biodiversity-rich areas. Many say the Maoist movement is a direct response to the six decades of neglect and exploitation of India's tribal population. Mani Shankar Iyer is a parliamentarian and a former minister. If there's any one segment of Indians whose lives have been completely disrupted by our current development process, it is the tribals whose land is being sought for the minerals that lie below it and for the forest wealth that lies above it. And this is being exploited, including their water resources, without any regard for their own welfare and their own participation in it. A number of mining companies operate in the region, including UK-based Vedanta and South Korean steel giant POSCO that have been accused of environmental and human rights abuses. Maoists have urged lawmakers to block some mining projects, but many Indian officials support the billions of dollars in potential mining. The recent kidnappings have evoked strong reactions, with some political parties demanding a stern response from the government. Some of the Maoist supporters have also severely criticized the rebels for the abductions. Nandini Sundar is professor of sociology at Delhi School of Economics. If you are a principled organization fighting for people, mm -hmm. then you should stick to some basic principles. Sundar is also the coordinator of the Citizens Initiative for Peace, a group that has been trying to bring the Maoists and the government to the negotiating table. 
but she doesn't see it happening in the near future. The basic fundamental issues are and, uh, not going to be addressed, like mining and so on. That is something that the government is really interested in pushing. And so, you know, it's not really going to be willing to have these talks where that actually involves giving up any of that. And the Maoists are also not, uh, there's a roadblock on their side too because they also have this long-term goal of, you know, capturing the whole state. So they don't want to kind of give that up. At the moment, the state government in Chhattisgarh has stopped the anti-Maoist operation. The government is also negotiating with the mediators representing the Maoists to facilitate the collector's release. Bismillah Gilani, Free Speech Radio News, New Delhi.